Hello everyone. This paper is an important point on the journey of bringing program synthesis to the masses, to end users, data scientists, and developers. I will describe this journey from the lens of achieving minimalism in a specification burden on the customer. The journey started with a desire to synthesize complicated algorithms with tricky non-intuitive components from logical specifications. For instance, how do you multiply two 2x2 two two matrices using 7 multiplications instead of 8? That's a question I asked my instructor in an introductory programming course when he mentioned this fact. His response was, this premium material is only meant for an elite class of students who qualify to take an advanced algorithms course. I reapplied to college and wasted one year of my life to enter that elite class. That scar remained until the first synthesis paper that I wrote, which described a technology to automatically synthesize this algorithm and its several variants. Coincidentally, this popular 2010 paper recently also won the most influential paper award. So much for vindictive inspiration. This paper made us realize that logical specs are too complicated. We wondered, what if the user expresses the intent using examples? But examples are extremely ambiguous. That's where this ICSI paper shows that the user can be guided to provide the right set of examples to converge to the intended algorithm. My manager wasn't impressed and asked, have you been able to synthesize a new algorithm? In fact, that's the most common question I got asked. I quickly realized I can't make the machine compete with Nuth. So instead, I found customers who would be grateful with the loop-free programs that machine can synthesize for them from examples. But there was a big challenge. To earn the customer's trust, you need to make this thing work with one example for common cases. For instance, suppose you have a bunch of strings in the form first name the dot dot last name at domain, and you want to extract the last name. 99% of spreadsheet users do not know programming and would struggle with such a task, but can easily specify what they want using examples. The Excel team told me, Sumit, this is cool, but you can't ship this unless you make it work with one example in most common cases. So that's what I did. And the resulting flash view feature now is one of the most popular features in Excel and has around a million invocations each week. Flashfill can automate a wide variety of string transformations, but there are many tasks that it cannot do, such as number or date transformations. The user experience, however, is so inviting that people invariably want to give it a try, even on tasks that it was never meant for, and then talk about it when it does not work. There was a recent tweet with tens of thousands of reshares. AI is going to take over the world. Look, what Excel auto-populated for me today. When they converted DEC to December, Flash will auto-completed JAN to Janember. Some people even came to the rescue of the Flash will feature, arguing that this is how we should have named months in the first place. I recently came across the shipping label, where someone even decided to incorporate Flash fill as part of their process automation. The best thing about such a customer feedback is that now you know what to prioritize and while we can now handle such tasks, there is pretty much no limit to how intelligent can the synthesizer be for such map transformations. How much further can you push on this journey of reducing spec from one example? Well, how about zero examples? That's what one of the product teams demanded when we approached them with the idea to help data scientists extract clean tabular data from semi-structured documents like web pages, PDF, text files, just by giving a few examples of various fields. They said, Sumit, we don't have time to build a UI for the user to provide examples. Can you make it work with zero examples? Initially, I thought they were crazy, but then we realized it made sense. We call it predictive synthesis, wherein intended programs are just synthesized from just the input. You can liken them to unsupervised learning in the machine learning world. The data connector that ships in Power BI allows the user to simply point to a web page and a parsing program for extracting tables is synthesized. If the user is not happy with the table, they can then leverage the by example capability. Is there anything else on this journey? Well, what about the user not even expressing their desire explicitly and who is serving them with what they need, like the Clippy? 
but a more intelligent version this time around. Consider the task of making the red green edits in this code base, where the goal is to lift the model variable from being part of an argument list to an invocation expression. The new IntelliCode suggestions feature that is now shipping inside Visual Studio can learn the user's intent from a few example edits as hidden in their natural but noisy workflows and is able to automatically suggest other related edits. We call it modeless synthesis and the technical problem that it yields is that of guessing what the examples of any repetitive pattern even are in the underlying trace of keystrokes. Most of the code that developers write is boilerplate code, plumbing code, and there is very little algorithmic creativity involved. There is an opportunity to improve the developer productivity by almost 10 to 100x. If you look at the history, we went from punched cards and assembly language to high level languages and beautiful code editors. The next evolution will take programming closer to human conversation, wherein it will be multimodal, involving use of examples and natural language to express intent. What I showed you was a start, but very significant because of real world adoption. Customers are now asking for more, and this is where we need more powerful techniques. A big technical opportunity is combining logical reasoning techniques, which can precisely model program semantics, with machine learning techniques, which can model the bias in real world and user's intent. However, there will always be scenarios that will not work in one shot. We need to fall back to interaction when faced with complicated or bigger scenarios. This is where we want to find even more inspiration from this very XE paper to make the computer act as a peer programmer or an observational assistant. Thank you folks for being so ahead of us in recognizing the significance of this work.